Okay, let's talk about uh, liver lesions and algorithmic approach uh, for differential diagnosis. And so in this last lecture of this marathon, um, although I'm kind of curious, it's interesting to sort of think about who's more tired right now. My, my guess is every single person in this room is absolutely exhausted, including myself. But anyway, we have one hour to go, we'll make it. Uh, so we're going to go over six diagnostic sets. We're going to go over diffuse arterial enhancement, mosaic enhancement, target arterial enhancement, ring arterial enhancement, peripheral discontinuous arterial enhancement, and finally, oh no, and peripheral arterial enhancement with peripheral washout. So everything has the word arterial except for mosaic. So six diagnostic sets. Now, um, it is getting late in the day, and so I want to warn you in advance that diagnostic set number one is going to take far and away the most amount of time. So in about 25 minutes, when we're still on diagnostic set number one, do not think that you're dealing with six times 25 minutes, okay? The rest go much faster. So diagnostic set number one, the entire lesion enhances either homogeneously, as shown on the image on your left, or heterogeneously on the image on your right, but the point is that you see enhancement in the outer part of it, you see enhancement in the inner part of it, you see enhancement in sort of the intermediate core. Everywhere you look, there's some enhancement in this uh, tumor, even if it's heterogeneous. So this is a very important diagnostic category. That's why we're going to spend the most amount of time on it. So let's start on CT with a 39-year-old woman. She has normal underlying liver. And what do we see in her liver? Uh, we see a mass. The mass is large. It's about six centimeters. The mass homogeneously enhances. It's maybe a little bit uh, lobulated. Notice that in the portal venous phase, the mass essentially disappears and fades into the background liver. And you might imagine that if you only had the portal venous phase and you were going through a stack of images in a stack of cases, you might even miss this lesion completely. The lesion has a little bit of enhancement on the outside, but it's sort of wispy and you're wondering, I bet that's not a real capsule, I bet that's just a little bit of you know, perilesional uh, enhancement. And so no real, and no real capsule, doesn't have a scar, very homogeneous. So what could this be? Normal liver. So let us do a rhetorical question, provide your differential diagnosis, and I'll help you out a little bit because now you've had time to think about it. So whenever I see diffuse enhancement, I think hepatocellular. So it could be an HCC, could be an FNH, could be an adenoma. But she's a 39-year-old woman. Young women do not get HCC as a general rule. So we don't like this as an HCC. So could this be an FNH or an adenoma? Well, it's so homogeneous that it's probably an FNH because adenomas tend to be more heterogeneous. So if I, were to, if I had only this case, I would say 39-year-old woman, hepatocellular mass in the liver, highly likely to be FNH, cannot completely exclude an adenoma, recommend what? Recommend gadozetate MRI for confirmation. At any rate, let's go through this lesion now. The differential diagnosis when you see diffuse enhancement is this. Hepatocellular, hepatocellular, hepatocellular. Hepatocellular lesions love to enhance diffusely. And the differential for hepatocellular lesions include focal nodular hyperplasia, hepatocellular adenoma. If someone has Bud Chiari syndrome, BCS, a hypervascular regenerative nodule, but this person does not have Bud Chiari. If someone has cirrhosis, HCC, but this woman does not have cirrhosis, and very rarely a fibrolamellar HCC, but no self-respecting fibrolamellar HCC would allow itself to be this homogeneous. So we will not even think about the possibility of fibrolamellar HCC. And we're stuck with FNH versus hepatocellular adenoma. So about one-third to two-thirds of FNHs read the textbooks and will have central scars. That means that one-third to two-thirds do not read the textbooks and do not have central scars, at least not visible on CT. So I can't prove this is FNH, but I like this for FNH. 
and my main differential is f and h. Now, sometimes you'll have things that diffusely enhance that are not hepatocellular, such as uh, small hemangiomas. So a rapidly enhancing hemangioma less than 15 millimeters might diffusely hyperenhance. This is way bigger than 15 millimeters, so we exclude hemangioma from consideration. A metastasis smaller than 3 centimeters might diffusely hyperenhance, but this is bigger than 3 centimeters, and this patient has no history of cancer, so we're not going to put in our differential diagnosis that this could be a metastasis. Now, sometimes things are not masses at all, and then we have this sort of alphabet soup, so you can have transient hepatic enhancement differences, or THEDs, also known as perfusion abnormalities, that can hyperenhance, but those are not masses. And this is round and proud. This is a mass. This is not a perfusion abnormality. So we would never say that this could be a transient hepatic uh, enhancement difference. Now in this case, young woman, F and H. Now what's the teaching point? The teaching point, two. Large, diffusely enhancing mass is likely hepatocellular because small hemangiomas and small mets can be diffusely enhancing and non-masses can be diffusely enhancing. But if it's a mass and it's big, it's got to be hepatocellular. And if it's homogeneous in the arterial phase and if it doesn't have a central scar and it disappears in the portal venous phase... Wow, thank you. I didn't even ask for this. My lab members are very well trained. <laughs> Almond milk? Yes. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, if she, if, if, she had, if she had put real milk in this, then it would show, the, it showed me anyway that she hates my guts. So, so um, okay, anyway, so... F and H's will sometimes disappear. So the disappearing mass, think F and H. Now, this doesn't prove it's an F and H, but think F and H if it disappears in the portal venous phase. So let's see how smart you guys are. Uh, here we have a mass, diffusely hyperenhancing on MRI, disappears in the portal venous phase. Not cirrhotic. What do you think about it? Don't get this wrong. F and H, right? F and H. So your, your diagnosis would say, this is highly likely to be an F and H. You might say, recommend gatazetate MRI to confirm, but you wouldn't say, this could be an HCC, this could be a metastasis, this could be whatever. No point in saying that. Don't scare the patient. Just say, this is likely an F and H, assuming the patient doesn't have cirrhosis, uh, and recommend or consider gatazetate for confirmation. Now, if this patient had cirrhosis, and I'd feel very differently. Okay, if this had cirrhosis, I'd be very worried that this is an HCC but it's the absence of cirrhosis that makes me feel so confident that this is very unlikely to be uh, an HCC. Okay, so same teaching point as before. If large and diffusely enhancing, it's hepatocellular, and if it's homogeneous and disappears in the portal venous phase, think uh, F and H, as opposed to this lesion over here. So this lesion is diffusely hyperenhancing, um, and therefore it's hepatocellular, but this lesion doesn't fade and disappear, does it? It sort of washes out to be darker than the liver. Now, if this person had cirrhosis, this would be an HCC. But this person doesn't have cirrhosis. She's a 17-year-old uh, adolescent female. So this is highly likely uh, to be a hepatocellular adenoma. Could this be a hypervascular regenerative nodule? No, she does not have but Chiari. Could this be HCC? extremely unlikely to have uh, HCC in the absence of cirrhosis. Well, what about a fibrolamellar HCC? Too homogeneous. So if it is homogeneous in the arterial phase, but does not disappear in the venous phases, if it sort of washes out or somewhat heterogeneous, think hepatocellular adenoma. Now, I'm not saying that you can prove this is a hepatocellular uh, adenoma. And so we then ordered an MRI. This was a few years ago, so we did an MRI with gadolinium bopta. And when we do gadolinium bopta, uh, we see that this mass uh, hyper enhances and holds on to contrast and then retains the contrast. And there's a central scar. So I was wrong. 
This is not a hepatocellular adenoma. This is an F and H. So here is an F and H that didn't read the textbooks. So I'm not saying that every F and H will fade and disappear. I'm just saying that if you see a lesion that disappears, think F and H. If you see a lesion that doesn't disappear, you can't call it an F and H. But if it's a young patient, especially a young uh, female, um, strongly consider the possibility that this is some sort of atypical uh, benign uh, lesion. Women, young women, get lots and lots of benign lesions in their liver. Elderly men, well, I don't want to confuse anyone. Let's just leave it like, at that for now. Young women often will have benign lesions in the liver, and they can look a little bit funny. And uh, here, BOPTA was done, but E of S would have been an appropriate choice as well. Now, some of you were asking about the central scar of an F and H if you gave an extracellular agent, and this is what you would expect to see. So you'd expect that in the arterial phase, the F and H would diffusely enhance, except for the central scar. You'd expect that in the portal venous phase, the mass would uh, fade and become iso-intense, the background liver. You'd expect that at about three to five minutes, contrast would gradually collect in the extracellular spongy tissue of the central, quote-unquote, scar, and that this contrast would retain in there uh, for, you know, several minutes. And so the central scar of an F and H enhances. Notice how delicate the central scar is. Notice how well-structured it is. Notice that it looks bright on T2 because it's very watery. Notice also that the F and H is completely homogeneous except for the scar and the fibrous septa. Notice that some focal nodular hyperplasias don't actually look like one mass. They actually look like a conglomeration of multiple nodules separated by fibrous septa. But this is not a nodule and nodule appearance of HCC because notice that every nodule looks essentially exactly the same. And in fact, on pathology, when focal nodular hyperplasia was first described in the 1950s, it was described as focal cirrhosis because under the microscope, it looks like a focal area of cirrhosis within an underlying normal liver because under the microscope, you'll see nodules separated by fibrous septa, kind of like regenerative nodules separated by fibrosis, all in one place. So this used to be called focal cirrhosis. It's now known as focal nodular hyperplasia because the cells are hyperplastic. Now, if you biopsy a focal nodular hyperplasia and you are a really cruel sort of person and don't tell the pathologist that you biopsied a focal nodular hyperplasia and instead you just tell the pathologist that you biopsied the liver, they may actually give you the diagnosis of cirrhosis. And because these cells look a little bit funny, they might even tell you this is HCC within a cirrhotic liver. So don't be cruel. If you biopsy a focal nodular hyperplasia, do tell your pathologist that you're diagnosing what you think is a focal nodular hyperplasia. Okay, now are there any questions? So the scar initially does not enhance. It then becomes iso. Eventually contrast gets into it. And then because it's so spongy, the contrast stays there. And because it's so watery, it looks bright on T2. Now notice that uh, this uh, F and H looks like popcorn. So when you see a lesion that looks like a popcorn kernel, think F and H. And here's just another example of the architecture of focal nodular hyperplasia in the arterial phase. Again, we see lots of these sort of individual nodules separated by fibrous septa with a central scar running through it. But memorize the appearance of this scar, right? Very delicate, very well structured, not amorphous, not blobby. It's a very distinct, very discrete structure. Now, I mentioned on the previous slide that you want to see the enhancement on the delayed phase if you're using an extracellular agent. And remember, on an earlier lecture, I mentioned that MRI is much more sensitive to gadolinium than CT is to iodine. So if you want to see the enhancement of the central scar and you do a CT and you're not sure you see it, you might want to do an MRI with an extracellular agent, or you can do an MRI with gadozetate, and you'll see the central scar to better advantage. Also notice that with MRI, you see the blood vessels 
better than on CT for the same reason, because MRI is more sensitive to gadolinium than CT is iodine. So MRI is superior to CT for showing the internal architecture of F and H. But if you think MRI with an extracellular agent is good, then just wait until you see MRI with gadozitate. Now this is a central scar that didn't read the textbooks, and this central scar is not enhancing on the delayed images. They should, right, like that previous case I showed you. Um, so some of you might be wondering, well, how do you know this is not the central scar then of a fibrolamellar HCC? And we'll show a case of that later. The central scar of a fibrolamellar HCC is very blobby. It doesn't look like this well-structured thing. But notice the internal architecture with gadozetate, how well you can see the internal architecture of the FNH. You can see the central scar, you can see this radiating pattern of fibrous septa carving this mass into its individual nodules. And now you can sort of imagine why, if you put a needle in this and didn't know you were looking at an FNH, you might think you were just looking at a cirrhotic liver. So this is so helpful that I've made a little collage for you of different cases of FNH, all again showing the central scar and the radiating fibrous network. Now sometimes the central scar is not so obvious, but you still see those fibrous septa and that radiating network. Gadozetate FNH. Here is a lesion that diffusely hyperenhances, so it's hepatocellular, but this is not homogeneous, is it? It's got this area that's not enhancing, and the outside area is not enhancing, and it doesn't look like the central scar and fibrous septa of an FNH. It's a young woman, so think benign, think hepatocellular, but this is not an FNH. Think hepatocellular adenoma. Now, am I sure this is a hepatocellular adenoma? No, I'm not positive, but I strongly suspect it. And so in my report, I would say there's a heterogeneous, diffusely hyperenhancing mass, young woman, highly likely to be hepatocellular, probably hepatocellular adenoma. I'd like to, Claude, but I cannot. My apologies. <laughs> not sure what I asked her to do, but whatever it was, I'm disappointed she can't do it. Um, okay, uh, here is another adenoma, diffusely hyperenhancing. So we're thinking hepatocellular. Uh, does this look homogeneous enough to be an FNH? No. Do we see a central scar? No. It looks sort of amorphous and smudgy. If we look carefully, uh, it holds on to contrast to be a little bit brighter than liver. So this is a hepatocellular adenoma. Hepatocellular adenomas have different pathomolecular subtypes. One subtype likes to hold on to contrast, that is the inflammatory adenoma. So my best guess is that this is an inflammatory adenoma showing a little bit of sustained enhancement on the delayed images. Uh, I showed you earlier this case. This is an FNH. This is a hepatocellular adenoma. There's no way that you could figure that out from these images. But from this image, you can see that this holds on to the gadozetate, except for the central scar. None of this takes up gadozetate, so this is an adenoma. That is an FNH. The teaching point, 90% or more of FNHs are iso or hyper in the hepatobiliary phase, where 90% or more of adenomas are hypo in the hepatobiliary uh, phase. Sorry, this, shouldn't, this should say hepatobiliary phase, not hepatobiliary agent. Sorry about that. Okay, this woman has Bud Chiari syndrome, and she has a nodule that's bright on T1, and this nodule diffusely enhances, and then it sort of fades. So what is this thing? Turns out that patients with Bud Chiari will develop these regenerative nodules. The regenerative nodules are not surrounded by fibrosis, so they're not like the regenerative nodules of cirrhosis. They're not surrounded by fibrosis, but they're regenerative nodules that are thought to be regenerative responses of the liver to this chronic vascular injury. Now these things are benign. The problem is that they grow. And the reason you know they grow is that the day this woman had Bud Chiari syndrome, the, first, the day that her portal vein, I'm sorry, that her hepatic veins occluded, she did not have nodules in her liver. So these nodules develop and they grow. So they can become very, very tricky. So the key is that if you see nodules that are bright on T1 and hyper-enhance, they're probably uh, uh, benign regenerative nodules in the setting of Bud Chiari. 
And so what I'll do is I'll follow these. Um, and if they're growing, I don't get that that worried unless they start changing their imaging characteristics. So these are tricky. Luckily, it's rare. So growth is not enough to make you think malignancy. Look for growth and change in imaging characteristics. But they can be up to four centimeters or more in size and still be benign. Now, you take a diffusely hyperenhancing mass and now put it in a cirrhotic liver. And now we're no longer going to think FNH or adenoma. So in the setting of cirrhosis, as a general rule, never, ever, ever put FNH or adenoma in your differential diagnosis. Exceedingly rare in the setting of cirrhosis. Instead, think HCC. So this thing hyper-enhances, it washes out to become darker than liver, it has this well-circumscribed enhancing rim or capsule appearance, this is an HCC. Teaching point, in the cirrhotic liver, a lesion or mass that's bigger than two centimeters and shows arterial phase hyper-enhancement, and that washes out or has a capsule or both, that's diagnostic of HCC. So here's another example of a lesion that's diagnostic of HCC, uh, hyper-enhancing, notice this capsule appearance in the setting of cirrhosis, this is an HCC. Now some of you have been asking about fibrolamellars. It's very hard on imaging to make the definite diagnosis of fibrolamellar. But what you can look for is you look for a mass that's diffusely hyper-enhancing, that tells you it's hepatocellular, but it's too heterogeneous to be an FNH, and it almost looks too heterogeneous even to be an adenoma. Now, fibrolamellars will have areas of necrosis, and these areas of necrosis will not enhance at all. It's not really a scar, and it's really not that delicate, well-structured thing that we saw last time. Fibrolamellars will have a lot of fibrous tissue, and that fibrous tissue might show delayed enhancement, as shown here. But notice how much more smudgy this delayed enhancement is compared to the delicate enhancing central scar of an FNH. So fibrolamellars might have areas of necrosis that don't enhance. And sometimes we'll call these non-enhancing scars, but they're not scars, they're areas of necrosis. And sometimes they will have areas of central uh, fibrosis, but these are not scars, they're smudgy, they're not well-formed, and these are just intratumoral areas of fibrosis. Now, I'm not saying that I could look at this and say fibrolamellar next case. I'm just saying I would look at this and say, okay, I know this is not an FNH. She's 22 years old, so I'd like to say this is benign, but boy, this looks so heterogeneous and so nonspecific that I'm going to say I don't know whether this is an adenoma or fibrolamellar HCC, and this ended up being resected. Uh, she's actually from the Navy, um, or she was from the Navy, or her husband was from the Navy, so this is... 22-year-old woman at the time, and this ended up being uh, a fibrolamellar uh, HCC. Okay, let's move on now to rapidly enhancing hemangiomas. So very tiny hemangiomas can diffusely hyperenhance. So this is diffusely hyperenhancing, and this is diffusely hyperenhancing. Uh, hemangiomas bigger than 15 millimeters would not look like this. Hemangiomas bigger than 15 millimeters, you'll see the puddling of contrast. So how do you know this is a hemangioma? Well, an MRI is pretty straightforward because it's clear that this is following the blood pool, right? It's bright here, bright here, bright here. At every time point, it's following the blood pool. So that's a hemangioma. What about on CT? It's still following the blood pool, isn't it? It's just harder on CT to, to confirm that. But if you think about it, this is matching the portal vein. This is matching the hepatic vein over here. And this is, again, matching the hepatic vein. It's just that the hepatic veins have faded to isoattenuation, and so the lesion is faded. So since it fades, how can you tell this is a hemangioma? Well, let's go to the MR, because there's another clue here. Tiny little hemangiomas are associated with a lot of AP shunting, and can you appreciate that surrounding this tiny nodule, there's a halo of enhancement, and this halo of enhancement is the arterial portal shunting that frequently surrounds tiny, rapidly enhancing hemangiomas. So now, let's go to our CT. Do we see this perfusional halo? We do. So in someone without cirrhosis, when I see a small lesion with a perfusional halo and that lesion fades, assuming the patient doesn't have cirrhosis, I feel very comfortable calling it a hemangioma or a probable hemangioma. 
take the same patient and tell me this patient has cirrhosis, I would not call it a hemangioma. While it still could be a hemangioma, I'd be more concerned that this could be uh, an HCC. Small metastases can homogeneously enhance. Here's a small metastasis homogeneously enhancing their arterial phase and fading on the delayed phase. We'll talk more about this later. Uh, but large metastases, no self-respecting large metastasis allows it to be so homogeneous. So teaching points, small metastases may diffusely hyperenhance, but large metastases become heterogeneous because they develop central necrosis and ischemia. Transient hepatic enhancement differences or THEDs, and if that's not bad enough, you can call them THADs, transient hepatic attenuation differences, or you call them THIDs, transient hepatic intensity differences. If you like this sort of stuff, remember, transient hepatic intensity difference is MRI, transient hepatic attenuation difference is CT, transient hepatic enhancement difference is agnostic, or just call them perfusion alterations. At any rate, perfusion alterations diffusely hyperenhance, diffuse hyperenhancement, diffuse hyperenhancement, but notice that they're not mass-like, they're wedge-like, they're often peripheral, and notice that if there's a blood vessel, the blood vessel courses through it undisturbed. Now, why is this important? Because I've seen these things being mistaken for tumors, and I've even seen patients undergo ablations uh, uh, for these wedge-shaped perfusion alterations. This is what a perfusion alteration, by the way, looks like on gadazetate. So if you're in doubt, gadazetate can be very helpful because most perfusion alterations will look invisible in the hepatobiliary phase. They also typically, but not always, look invisible on other sequences as well. Ah, this is the case, this is one case that was embolized. So here we see a perfusional alteration in the liver. How do I know it's perfusional alteration? It's wedge-shaped. Doesn't look that mass-like. And if you look here at the diffusion, notice that there's blood vessels running through it right where this mass is. So that's not a mass. It's just a perfusion alteration. But this was actually embolized uh, by an interventional radiologist. So the good news is that this perfusion alteration has not recurred. Uh, the bad news is that the patient underwent an expensive and risky and painful and potentially harmful procedure uh, to get rid of something that is benign. Okay, so that was long, 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 long. Things get much, much, much shorter now. So now we're going to go on from diffuse arterial enhancement to mosaic enhancement. What do I mean by mosaic enhancement? I mean a mass that is composed of internal nodules or internal compartments or a combination of internal nodules and compartments. The nodules and compartments are randomly distributed. They vary in size and in imaging appearance. That is mosaic. So here's an example of a mosaic mass in a 76-year-old man, no hepatitis, no cirrhosis, normal underlying liver. And he's previously healthy. He has no cancer outside the liver. He's got a big mass in the liver. Notice that on the delayed images, the mass has a capsule appearance and fibrous septa. Notice that this mass sort of has nodules within it. So nodules within nodules. Notice that it has some compartments of necrosis that seem to be randomly distributed, fibrous septa that seem to be randomly distributed, and notice that some of these compartments uh, do not enhance in the arterial phase, but do uh, retain contrast on more delayed phases. Notice that there's blood vessels sort of randomly distributed throughout this thing. So this is mosaic enhancement. So what is the differential diagnosis of mosaic Enhancement, rhetorical question, what would you say about this in this 76-year-old previously healthy man? No cirrhosis, no cancer outside the liver. Well, what's the differential? The differential is a hepatocellular cancer, either an HCC or a fibro lamellar HCC, or the differential is occasionally, it could be a conglomeration of metastases. That's your differential diagnosis for mosaic. Let's see who's awake. Who would like to be told that they have a mosaic mass in their liver? 
Okay, good, we're all awake. So none of us want to have mosaic masses in our livers because you're either dealing with an HCC, a fibrolamellar HCC, or a conglomeration of metastases. I'm not sure which is best. Now this person is previously healthy, so what do you think it is? And the answer, the key, is this is an elderly man, and you need to know two more things about HCC. You need to know that HCC is a cancer that increases in incidence with age and also is of greater incidence in men than in women because it is in part driven by testosterone. So although 76-year-old men are not at high enough risk of developing HCC that anyone would think of putting all 76-year-old men on a screening program for HCC, they are at a high enough risk that if you see something that looks like an HCC, it probably is an HCC, even if they don't have cirrhosis. So this is an HCC. Now, I'm not saying that I'm so confident that I would say this is an HCC and you don't need to biopsy it, but I'm just saying that in my discussions with the clinician, I would say I strongly suspect this is an HCC, even though this patient has no history of cirrhosis. Now, if this patient had a known primary somewhere else, then I might feel differently, and I might say, well, this could be a metastatic deposit from something. But in the absence of a known cancer, I would favor HCC, despite the lack of cirrhosis. Not if it was a woman. So if this was a 76-year-old woman, I'd be scratching my head more, because HCC in non-cirrhotic women is pretty uncommon. At any rate, these are more advanced points. What's the, what's the take-home message? The take-home message is you do not want to have a mosaic mass in your liver because it's malignant. And it's either an HCC or a metastasis. Now, why do HCCs look mosaic on imaging? They look mosaic on imaging because they look mosaic on pathology. So here's two different HCCs, and I think you can appreciate that HCCs are composed on pathology of internal nodules, internal nodules, and internal compartments. Some of these compartments are hemorrhagic, some are necrotic. Uh, some of these nodules retain bile and look green, some don't. Uh, some look whiter, etc. So notice that the nodules look different on pathology, just look like they look different on imaging. And some of the nodules are nodules, and some of these compartments are areas of hemorrhage or necrosis or whatever. And notice that both of these HCCs have a capsule. And notice that with this HCC, there's a satellite metastasis right outside the capsule here. And there's another satellite metastasis here. And there's another satellite metastasis here. And so this is a bit of a digression, but what are satellites? Satellites are metastases uh, from the primary, and they're often in the immediate vicinity of the primary tumor. I'm not sure what this is. I think that's probably just a regenerative nodule. And what are all these other things, by the way? These are all regenerative nodules. So how many regenerative nodules does the cirrhotic liver have? The cirrhotic liver has millions and millions and millions of regenerative nodules. The whole liver is replaced by regenerative nodules. Okay, those are digressions. At any rate, recognizing mosaic architecture is important enough that I've created this little collage for you sort of to make a visual memory of the sort of spectrum of mosaic lesions that you might see uh, in the setting of uh, cirrhosis. Now, I mentioned that occasionally metastatic disease will coalesce and you'll get the idea or the sense that you might be dealing with nodules within nodules and different compartments but this is usually the coalescence of metastases most metastases we'll talk about in a moment have a rim-like configuration but you can imagine if multiple rims all coalesce together it might look a little bit like a mosaic the difference is that you wouldn't get fooled right because this might be confusing, but that's not confusing, that's not confusing. So typically, you'll see other lesions that look like METs, and you'll be able to make the diagnosis. Now, just to prove that mosaic, uh, can, that conglomerate METs and HCCs can resemble one another, uh, I've come up with this little collage of mosaic tumors. And what I want you to guess is which ones are the HCCs, the green ones, or the uh, lavender ones the pink ones. So are these HCCs or are these METs? And are these HCCs or are those METs? So the good news is you have a 50-50 chance of getting this right. 
But I showed you on a previous slide that some HCCs like to hold on to bile, and those are known as green HCCs because they look green. And I wouldn't fool you, so the green ones are the HCCs, and the pinkish ones are the METs. Okay, diagnostic set number three, target appearance in the arterial phase. And by that I mean that there's a thick rind of enhancement along the rim of a lesion. The inner border may be sharply defined, or the inner border might be ill-defined with gradual fading. This is what I mean by target enhancement in the arterial phase. And here's a 48-year-old man, and I'll never forget this guy, not because he has tumors in the liver, but because this guy, he was 48, but he was a former naval SEAL. And when we were doing the imaging, he got very offended when we were asking him to breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. He would just say, whenever you want, just tell me to stop breathing, and I'll just stop breathing. And so I asked him, well, how long can you hold your breath this way? And he said, oh, probably about two and a half minutes. And so what we did is we did in one breath hold, pre, arterial, portal venous, and delayed, which I'm not showing you. So we did three minutes of imaging in one breath hold. And this is the warning I gave him. I said, breathe in. No, I'm sorry. I said, stop breathing. We got the pre, gave the contrast, got the arterial, portal venous, delayed, and after three minutes, we said, you can breathe. And he was not that healthy because look what he's got going on in the liver. And yet this guy could hold his breath for three minutes. So anyway, I don't know if any of you are Navy SEALs, but I'm just so impressed by that. At any rate, what does this guy have? This guy has target lesions in his liver. In this particular case, the target has a sharply defined interface between the outer and the inner border, but that's not important. The point is it's target. And what else do we see? Do we see anything else? I'll let you think about it. Let us now go on to the differential diagnosis for target enhancement. So common things that cause target enhancement, metastasis. Uncommon things that cause target enhancement are HCC and cholangiocarcinoma. So let's see who's awake, who would like to have a target in their liver. So a mosaic in the liver is a cancer, a target in the liver is a cancer. We just switch around the, what we favor. So MET, HCC, cholangio. Does anyone see something else on this image that clues us into what this could be? So some of us will notice that the, uh, the pancreatic head looks kind of funny, how there's a hypervascular mass in the pancreatic head. So this patient ended up having a pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor metastatic uh, to the liver. And so our first differential is metastatic disease. But the teaching point is not that you necessarily need to come down on MET. The teaching point is that target arterial enhancement is malignant. So here are some targets on CT and MRI and CT. And this are, these are neuroendocrine METs. This is a colorectal cancer MET. And this is a breast cancer MET. Now, targets don't have to be metastatic. Here's a target that was a hepatocellular carcinoma. And here's a target that was a cholangiocarcinoma. The important thing to remember for today, target, cancer, cancer, cancer. Now, something that's almost as bad as a target, but not quite as bad as a target, is the ring. So by ring, it's basically a target, but just a thin, delicate target. So a thin rim of enhancement. Again, it could be sharply defined or have sort of a gradual transition. So this is what I mean by ring enhancement. And here's our prototypical case. So this is a case from 2001, when I was a first-year uh, faculty member. And Bob Matchy was my mentor. Uh, I think probably three-quarters of you know Bob, but maybe a quarter of you don't. Uh, and uh, Bob was teaching me about the liver, and this patient comes in. She's 44. She had some kind of gallbladder issue going on, so she got this MRI for her gallbladder, but incidentally, she had this liver lesion detected. And Bob saw me reading out the case, and he walked by, and he said, oh, my God, poor patient has metastatic disease. And I said, what do you mean metastatic disease? Patient asymptomatic, she has no liver disease, we're doing this MRI for the gallbladder, and he said, no, no, this is metastatic disease, rings in the liver are bad. 
and he insisted that I call the patient's doctor, and I felt a little bit embarrassed, but I called the patient's doctor, and I said, look, you know, I reviewed this case with my mentor, Bob Matry, and he says your patient has metastatic disease, and the doctor thought this was ridiculous, but, lower, but Bob insisted, and so the patient ended up, make a long story short, had breast cancer that was detected on mammography after this MRI, and about two years later, in 2003 or so, this patient had probably 150 metastases in the liver and unfortunately died shortly thereafter. But her metastatic disease from breast cancer was diagnosed when she had this MRI of the liver to evaluate something in her gallbladder. So let's review ring enhancement. Uh, what's the differential diagnosis for ring enhancement? What did Bob Matry know in 2001 that I did not know at that time? Well, what Bob Matry knew is that the differential for ring enhancement was this. It could be a metastasis. It could be an atypical HCC. And so Bob knew that, you know, a 44-year-old woman with no cirrhosis is not going to develop an HCC, much less an atypical HCC. It could be a cholangio or a hepatocholangio. Could have been that, I suppose. Um, abscess, there was no fever. Inflammatory pseudolesion, there was no white count. Ablated lesion, there was no history of ablation. So Bob kind of went through this list in his own head very quickly and said, that's got to be a MET. And unfortunately, that's what it was. But this is what you need to know. Rings in the liver are bad because they're either cancers or they are infectious inflammatory lesions. Or the person has a cancer and you're looking at an ablated lesion. This ended up being metastatic disease. Teaching point. In an adult without liver disease, infection, or history of ablation, an arterial ring-enhancing lesion is a metastasis until proven otherwise. And so here is an example of neuroendocrine cancer, and I like this case because here we see a small, a tiny, a small, a medium size, and a slightly larger metastasis, and we can see what happens. So a tiny and a small metastasis can be diffusely enhancing, can't they? But when this cancer grows from this to this, it develops central ischemia, and it develops a little bit of hypoenhancement. As it grows from this to this, the central ischemia becomes more pronounced and only the outer rim enhances. And as it grows, it continues to grow as a ring of enhancement on the arterial phase. So that's why I say that small metastases can be diffusely enhancing, but metastases bigger than three centimeters are almost always heterogeneous because they develop central ischemia or necrosis. Okay, so memorize this appearance and now take this lesion, but put it into a cirrhotic patient. So a ring enhancing lesion in a cirrhotic patient is either an atypical HCC, or it's a cholangiocarcinoma, or it's a combined hepatocholangiocarcinoma. Um, and I can't tell the difference. Uh, I can't tell you which one this is, but what I can tell you is that this is a cancer, and what I can tell you is I can't prove it's an HCC. So this is the kind of case that probably needs a biopsy. Because if it's an HCC, the patient could get a transplant. If it's a cholangiocarcinoma, cholangiocarcinomas metastasize early outside the liver. This patient should not get a liver transplant. So this patient should get a biopsy. Teaching point. In an adult with cirrhosis and no history of ablation, an arterial ring-enhancing lesion is malignant. But... It is not specific for HCC. The differential includes atypical HCC, ICC, in other words, cholangiocarcinoma, and hepatocholangiocarcinoma. Biopsy may be needed. I showed you this case earlier. Here's a ring-enhancing lesion. We recommended biopsy because we knew this was malignant. These are, this is a cirrhotic patient. We knew this was a malignancy. We weren't sure it was an HCC. This is a sarcomatoid carcinoma. Here we see a ring-enhancing lesion. This is a case that uh, Ryan and Albert Chow did uh, at the C tipum on the, C on, the, uh, on the disco technique. Ring-enhancing lesion. This is a cancer, uh, but it's not definitely an HCC. We recommended biopsy. This was a cholangiocarcinoma. Uh, here is a CT, ring-enhancing lesion in someone with cirrhosis. This is a cancer, but I'm not sure it's an HCC. We recommended a biopsy. This ended up being poorly differentiated HCC. So ring enhancement doesn't exclude HCC, it just doesn't rule it in.
Finally, this case over here, funny looking lesion in the liver, delayed central enhancement centrally, big uh, perfusional halo, but notice that this thing is not centrally enhancing, so this is not like that hemangioma with the perfusional halo. This is a very heterogeneous mass with a perfusional halo, uh, recommended biopsy, poorly differentiated ACC. This case over here looks very similar, right? So this is on CT. This is a different case, but looks somewhat different, uh, looks somewhat similar. Uh, sort of heterogeneous mass, lots of perilesional enhancement. Lesion sort of gradually accumulates contrast centrally, recommended a biopsy, poorly differentiated HCC. By the way, what are all these little tiny nodules adjacent to this thing? You remember on the pathology, we saw satellite lesions, so notice that these are all satellite lesions. Notice that all these satellite lesions uh, are in the area of the perilesional halo. We can talk about that some other day. But the teaching point for those of you who want to go into IR or are interventionalists is that if you're going to ablate this lesion, make sure to include the perilesional halo because the perilesional halo is where the metastases like to end up. Now, if you ablate all of this, it doesn't guarantee that there's no metastases elsewhere in the liver from this lesion, uh, but at least you'll get rid of most of them, or at least you'll have a fighting chance of getting rid of most of them. Uh, and finally, another rim-enhancing lesion in cirrhotic liver. This is a cancer. I can't prove this is an HCC. Recommend biopsy. This ends up being a combined tumor. This is a tumor that can't make up its mind whether it wants to be an HCC or cholangio. This is a hepatocholangio. Take the same lesion, but make it a normal liver, and give the patient cholangitis, and now you're going to think abscess. So this was an abscess. We treated the patient with antibiotics for six weeks. Six weeks later, we re-imaged. The thing was gone. So in acute cholangitis, an arterial ring-enhancing lesion is a pyogenic abscess until proven otherwise. Take the same lesion and put it back into a cirrhotic patient, but post-ablation. And then you just have post-ablation granulation tissue. I guess it's not quite the same. The difference is that with post-ablation granulation tissue, you have rim enhancement in the arterial phase that gradually gets more and more intense. So progressive enhancement of a smooth, circumferential, uniform rim of enhancement around a lesion that has been ablated is a normal post-procedural finding. Do not call this recurrent disease. Call this normal post-procedural uh, finding likely attributable to granulation uh, tissue. Diagnostic set number five. Peripheral discontinuous arterial phase hyperenhancement, either manifesting as these sort of globules of enhancement or nodules of <coughs> enhancement or both. Peripheral discontinuous. So this is uh, for the more senior residents, fairly straightforward, this is going to be a hemangioma. So hemangiomas manifest, and, and the reason, there's no differential here. So this is a hemangioma. It's got peripheral discontinuous puddles of enhancement. The puddles expand, very important word, they expand from the outside in, but they don't wash out from the outside, right? There's no washout. They're just simply expanding from where they start and they gradually coalesce. So expanding, coalescing, peripheral discontinuous enhancement, those are the hallmark features of hemangiomas. Notice that at every time point, the enhancement of these puddles matches the blood pool. And if we were to do EOVIS, they'd be matching the blood pool with EOVIS as well, but the EOVIS would be washing out, and so the puddles would be washing out. But I don't want to confuse the issue. Now, in this particular case, we asked the patient whether she'd mind seeing the scanner a little bit longer because we made a diagnosis at this point, and we did. And you can see that the puddles coalesce and expand until they fill the entire lesion except for a central core. Some radiologists have described this as a central scar. This is not a central scar. Uh, this is an area of cystic degeneration in the center of a giant hemangioma. And to prove to you that's not a central scar, Look how bright it is on T2. It's liquid bright on T2. 
And so this is not a central scar, it's an area of liquefactive necrosis or cystic degeneration. Something else to notice about hemangiomas is a more advanced comment point. So for the more junior people, don't worry if you don't follow. But for the more advanced residents, just be aware of the following. That you may have been taught that hemangiomas look like light bulbs on T2. And that's true when they're small. But when they get large, like this, then the hemangioma starts to develop a lot of fibrous tissue within its stroma. And so it's not going to be quite as bright as a smaller hemangioma. So large hemangiomas may not be light bulb bright except for the area of central cystic degeneration. Do not call that area of central cystic degeneration a scar. It's not a scar. It's a round area of literally liquid. If you were to put a straw in it, not recommending you do this, but if you put a straw in it, you could drink from it. So if you can drink from it, don't call it a scar. Okay. Now, why am I showing you a hemangioma? Because the differential diagnosis is not, right? It's a diagnosis. It's a hemangioma. The reason I'm showing you a hemangioma is that they're not always so easy because necrotic tumors with peripheral nodularity can look like hemangiomas, and I've seen this mistake made a lot of times. So here's an example. Here is a patient who has peripheral discontinuous nodules of enhancement. And you can imagine, if you looked only at this image, you might, on a bad day, say it looks a little bit like a hemangioma. Now, if you look more carefully, you'll see that there's actually a continuous rim of enhancement, and that might dissuade you just a little bit. But the key is that on the more delayed images, do these puddles of enhancement expand? No, they don't. Do the puddles of enhancement follow the blood pool, or do they wash out to become darker than liver? They wash out to become darker than liver. So they're not expanding and they're washing out. So these are not peripheral discontinuous globules of enhancement. These are peripheral nodules within nodules. And if I were to tell you that this patient had cirrhosis, which this patient did, then you'd say that this is an HCC. Now, some of you might be saying, ah, so one teaching point is you not make the diagnosis of hemangioma if you can help it on a single phase, because on a single phase, you might have called that a hemangioma. All right, now some of you might be saying, ah, I'm not fooled by this. I would have never called that a hemangioma. Well, here's a case that was called a hemangioma. So this is a very large mass in the liver, and it came to us from the outside, and this was called a hemangioma, and they referred us this to us as a second opinion. And I can sort of see why this looks like a hemangioma, right? Because in the arterial phase, you kind of see these puddles of enhanced, and they look a little bit discontinuous. And notice that on the delayed phase, some of these puddles are starting to coalesce together, and it looks like the enhancement is actually expanding a little bit. But why is this not a hemangioma? The reason it's not a hemangioma, rhetorical question, I'll let you guys think about it for another second, why is this not a hemangioma? It's not a hemangioma because these puddles are not following the blood pool. They become darker than the liver. So when you give an extracellular agent, the puddle should never be darker than the background liver. So this was not a hemangioma. This was actually a metastasis to the liver. I believe this was a sarcoma or a melanoma. I'm not sure exactly what kind of cancer this was, but this was a metastasis to the liver that had large areas of necrosis. And this was not a hemangioma. It was a malignancy. So if you see nodules that wash out to become darker than liver, do not call it a hemangioma. Now, diagnostic set number six is this one. Peripheral rim arterial phase hyperenhancement with peripheral washout and central. No, I'm, so there's a little schematic here missing. So the center, sorry, I apologize. The center should be bright. What this should be showing is the contrast gradually filling in and then accumulating in the center of this thing. So I apologize, the schematic is wrong. So what is this peripheral washout and central fill-in? Yeah, something's wrong here. Okay, let's look at an example. So 59-year-old man, previously healthy, no history of liver disease, and he comes in with this mass over here in the liver. So let's look at the arterial phase and the 15-minute delayed phase side by side. So the mass is lobulated. The enhancement is mainly on the outside. There's no enhancement on the inside. At 15 minutes, the mass has washed out from the outside. 
the contrast has made itself from the outside to the inside and it's accumulating. The mass is lobulated. Any ideas what this might be? And are there any other clues on the image? And I'll give you another clue to the clue. The clue to the image is in the liver. So it's not the aorta, it's not the bone. It's here. So these are bile ducts. So here's this lobulated mass obstructing bile ducts. So what could this be? So this is a cholangiocarcinoma. So patients with cirrhosis are at increased risk for cholangiocarcinoma, but most cholangiocarcinomas occur in patients without liver disease. So if you see something that looks like a cholangiocarcinoma and the patient has no liver disease, it very well might be a cholangiocarcinoma. But the, this appearance is very typical where there's enhancement on the outside and the contrast gradually makes its way into the inside uh, while the periphery uh, washes out. And what's your differential diagnosis for peripheral washout? Okay, it's either a primary cancer or a MET. So it's either a cholangiocarcinoma, a hepatocholangiocarcinoma, an atypical HCC, or a metastasis. So we're nearing the end. Let's see who's awake. Who would like to have a mass in their liver that shows peripheral washout? Doesn't look like anyone wants to have a mass with peripheral washout. So peripheral washout is cancer. It's either a primary cancer or a metastatic cancer. This ended up being a cholangiocarcinoma. But the teaching point, peripheral washout, is malignant. So let me show you a few more examples. Here's a mass that has peripheral enhancement on the arterial phase. Notice that in 15 minutes, you see how the outer margin of it has washed out. And the contrast is accumulating centrally. So this is peripheral washout with central enhancement. This is malignant. It's a solitary mass. It's causing retraction of the surface. This is a cholangiocarcinoma. Oh, and I guess just to show the magnified view of the arterial enhancement on the rim that then washes out on the more delayed images. This is the Navy SEAL that could hold his breath for um, two or three minutes. And what I'm trying to show you here is that on the delayed images, so notice that the lesions enhance on the outside, and then they equilibrate, and then the contrast gradually starts accumulating in the center as the periphery washes out. Uh, so this is peripheral washout with central enhancement. So we've seen this now with metastatic disease. We saw this earlier with cholangiocarcinoma. Now some of you might be thinking, geez, I've seen so many metastases in my life on CT. Um, I'm not really aware of seeing this. And, and the reason you haven't noticed it on CT is CT is not that sensitive to iodine. But if you look carefully, you'll see it on CT. So here's a rim-enhancing mass. And notice that on the delayed images, if you window it really harshly, there is retained enhancement and very subtle peripheral washout. It's very subtle, but if you window your liver images very harshly, very narrowly on CT, you'll start appreciating some of this peripheral washout. It won't be as dramatic as on MRI, but you'll see it. Now, sometimes you'll get fooled, and this is a case that was read as a hemangioma, and I think the reason it's read as a hemangioma is it looked like there was peripheral enhancement in the arterial phase. The contrast gradually fills in, and on the delay, it's completely filled in. But if you look carefully, what part is filled in? The part that's filled in is the part that was not enhancing early, and the part that was enhancing early has now faded to isoattenuation. So this is not expanding puddles of enhancement, like a hemangioma. This is actually peripheral fading with central fill-in. So this was not a hemangioma. This was a metastasis. Uh, so central fill-in may be mistaken for a hemangioma if the periphery washes out or fades while the center accumulates. Think cancer, not hemangioma. And, uh, just, and this is a case of a hepatocholangiocarcinoma. Uh, this was a patient that had rim-enhancing lesions and cirrhosis with gradual fill-in. Uh, the patient had NASH. This ended up being 
uh, hepatocalangio uh, carcinoma. Okay, let's, re let's summarize what we talked about and then we'll call it a day. So we went over six diagnostic sets. We went over diffuse enhancement, mosaic enhancement, target enhancement, ring enhancement, peripheral discontinuous, and peripheral washout. Diffuse enhancement, we spent about 30 minutes on this because this is long and complicated. But if a mass is large and it's diffusely enhancing, it's hepatocellular. It's either a focal nodular hyperplasia, a hepatocellular adenoma. If the patient has blood Chiari, it could be a hypervascular regenerative nodule, but do not suggest this if the patient does not have some sort of vascular disorder. It could be an HCC, but in general, don't suggest that unless the patient has cirrhosis or is an elderly man. It could be a fibrolamellar HCC, but that's very rare, and don't suggest it unless it's really very heterogeneous and has lots of sort of smudgy elements that you don't otherwise understand. If it's very small, it could be a hemangioma, but then it'll follow the blood pool on all phases, approximately follow the blood pool. If it's less than three centimeters, it might be a metastasis, but usually there'll be some lesions in there that are big enough that they'll have central ischemia and you'll be able to make the diagnosis. If it's not mass-like, it's probably a perfusion alteration. And some of the acronyms are transient hepatic enhancement difference, transient hepatic intensity difference, transient hepatic attenuation difference. If the lesion hyperenhances and disappears, think FNH. If the lesion is a little bit too heterogeneous to be FNH, think hepatocellular adenoma. If you want to prove it's an FNH, consider gadozetate MRI. Mosaic enhancement, terrible differential diagnosis. It's either an HCC, a fibrolamellar HCC, or a conglomeration of metastases. It's malignant. Target enhancement, terrible diagnosis, terrible thing to have in your liver. It's either a metastasis or a primary liver cancer. So notice that this is terrible, this is terrible. The only difference is that we change the ranking, the ordering a little bit of what we consider. Ring enhancement is almost as bad as target enhancement. It's got the same uh, initial differential diagnosis, except that it could be an abscess, could be an inflammatory pseudolesion, or it could be an ablated lesion. Peripheral discontinuous is very straightforward. It's a hemangioma, unless it's not straightforward. So be careful. If you see peripheral nodularity, make sure the peripheral nodules are expanding, coalescing, and find the blood pool. If they're not expanding, if they're not coalescing, if they're not finding the blood pool, don't call it a hemangioma. Think cancer with central necrosis. Finally, peripheral washout, terrible thing to have in your liver. It's either a primary liver cancer or it's a metastasis. So with that, I hope that in the year 2017, none of you get any liver lesions. But if you do get liver lesions, I hope that they are hyper-enhancing and disappear in the portal venous phase. I hope none of you ever get a mosaic mass, a target mass, a ring mass, or a peripheral washout mass. Yes, Ryan. No, I, I kind of made this up. So, um, but that's your project for next year. Okay, so if there's no other questions, thank you all for suffering through this. Thank you.